everyone, welcome to Punters Inside Run. It's another massive week in racing in both Sydney and in Melbourne. We've got Group 1 racing in both. We've got the Randwick Guineas and the Australian Guineas. So in a week where uh, the government decided to uh, tax, put extra tax on superannuation over people with $3 million in their account, I'm joined by two people who are punters, and there's no chance of that happening. Zero Shark, chance. hello Zero to you. Zero chance of that, mate. <laughs> What's a super account? <laughs> you can take certain amounts out to put on quaddies each year. Oh, good, yeah. Is that self-managed? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, so tax. I, no tax. No tax. But, uh, where do you look this weekend? It's wonderful racing. I love this weekend racing. Absolutely fantastic. And I, I think the, the Ramp Guineas is one of the highlight races of the whole year. All right, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because we're going to look at Sydney shortly. We'll look at the Ramwick Guineas. We'll also look at the other group one, which is the Canterbury Stakes. James Lamb from punters.com will join us, as always, to look at the Australian Guineas and also the Blamey Stakes. Can Gentleman Roy turn the tables? And uh, we've got Jacquino running as well. So we've got uh, some usual suspects there. Shark will have his perm. Yes, buddy. I will. You will? And somehow we're going to get four legs in the perk, not three legs in a stick. And Gloria last week, Gloria Steiner. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Let's get into Sydney. Let's uh, get stuck into it. And uh, seven group races on the card, including the two slipper lead ups. We're going to steer clear of the Todman and the Riesling. We'll start with the Canterbury Stakes. Weight for age over 1,300 metres. We get a Kiwi here. Is this the best Kiwi horse? Is this the best horse in the country in New Zealand? Ooh, it's hard to argue that she's not mm. Imperatriz. Maddie, she's in career best form, isn't she? She's always yeah. been elite over there as she's gone through her age group. I think now we're seeing a, a race fit horse, the absolute peak of her powers. Uh, very, very hard to work around her unless you are one of those punters that avoids odds on prices because that's I think that's what we're gonna have to take. Into, we're gonna have to take into, odds into the on. red now. Yeah, we're gonna have to take odds on. First go in Australia, group one, it's not an easy assignment when you look at it like that, but she's she's got the form on the board. It never is for Kiwi horses, Simon, but also we can't match up that form. We can't really match up the form of Artorias, given that Artorias has been racing in Group 1's overseas, and we've got an overseas jockey in Zach Purton, or a former Australian jockey, comes back to ride. And yeah, if you take a line through Nature Strip, I suppose you say, oh, geez, I'm not sure how these horses have come back from their, their journeys overseas. The horse I, I really like in the race outside of the Kiwi horse is Cascadian. OK. You know, yeah. The he, Evergreen Cascadian? Ever, evergreen Cascadian. He, he's now proven to go at this level and go consistently at this level. And we only think back to the championship mile. He was fantastic in that championship mile in the spring. Fresh, fresh legs for him for the autumn. I'll give him a real shot. The other horse fresh in this race is Golden Mile out of the yeah, expressway. Yeah. And I think most expected him to then roll into the 1400 races towards mile races, maybe the Australian Guineas, maybe the Ramwick Guineas, possibly a little setback or maybe just a change of plans for Godolphin to, to line up at, at a race that they saw was another group one opportunity for, for a valuable colt in a race that might fall away a bit, and that's what's happened. Early money says Lombardo's going to run a hell of a race. There's a bit of early money for that, but let's get your tips for uh, the Canterbury Stakes. I'm with Imperatriz. I, I think she's unavoidable as the top pick, given how she's going. Artorias is a very talented horse on his day, but Simon, he runs a lot of placings, doesn't mm. he, without winning. Mm. So I'm just taking that sit against him here. I think they'll ride him, or try and ride him closer to the speed. I think that's part of the reason Zach Purton's over to ride. Uh, Golden Mile next best. I'm playing at the top of the market. I think Imperatriz will win, but just whether we can get a touch better than, than what she is at the market. Not a lot of value at that price, is it, Simon? You've got Cascadian on top. What else do you like? Yeah, I've I, probably got an equal one. I've gone yep. with the Mayor, the Kiwi Mayor, and, and Cascadian. Yep. When I see double figure odds at Cascadian, I'm thinking, oh, I, I, I want some of that. Two so, best strategy? Yeah, yeah, pretty Save much. Save on mate. the five? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that, so. It might be a way to go. And look, Johnny O'Shea, I think he's having a, just a ripping autumn. Uh, his horses are performing well. They're really finding the right. I think he can do that with Quantico in this too. OK, well, I'll go same as Shark, same numbers, but Imperatriz from uh, from Golden Mile and then Artorias, who seems to always flash home for third. He saw that overseas and see that here. So uh, 1,300 first up might help him, though, and, and as will the booking of Zach Purton. All right, let's get to the main event. Uh, uh, we talk about uh, the uh, Ramwick Guineas, mate. So you, you said you love this race. Now, a lot of them come out of the Hobartville. Firstly, half cabin's our favourite. Can it turn things around from the Hobartville? Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think he can. I, I'm betting around half cabin. Um, I, I know he's bubble bursting. He had no luck. I mean, they, they took him on, they kept him wide, all the, all the things you want to go wrong. Um, if you uh, weren't on the favourite, did go wrong his last start. I think Ozapenko is going to be a pretty special horse going forward. I think he's in for a ripping autumn. Probably you can make a very good argument that he should have won the Guineas down here in the spring. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ozapenko and Zoo Tiger, I, their last 
run at Randwick, both of them I thought were absolute excellent lead-ins to where they're going to be going on it's Saturday. The, it's the form race and you've been pretty keen on Osipenko all the way through here on, yeah. on Inside Run. Yeah, I love him. I'm sort of probably yeah. arguably still chasing, although not chasing so much, Simon, from that Guineas last year after he won last start. Yeah. It was a, a great result at a price, but Last time he had the benefit of an inside draw, did no work in the run, the gap came back inside, he went and took it and won the race. After Cabin, on the other hand, was drawn wide, wanted to push forward, got barbecued up on a, a, a bit of a speed battle. The same thing could happen here, he's drawn wide again after Cabin. There's probably a little bit more speed than there was in that race last time. That may help him slot in, or he may be hung out three wide and working and, and having to keep working forward to sit outside the leader. So I think he's vulnerable again after Cabin. I'm with Ozopenko to beat half cabin. I thought Williamsburg was the value. Okay, Williamsburg. Third up, a roughie. really good run last time. Never really got a clear run at them, but kept working to the line. Your top three and then in order? Yeah, two, four, and one. Ozopenko, Zoo Tiger, and Manzoi is coming back from a derby, going to be fresh legs. I, I always reckon there's a there's a stayer returning over this journey that runs a big race, and I think that's the horse that's going to do it, man's always. I've gone for Machalate, who really uh, did hit the line in that same race, so I've gone against half cabin and uh, also Osipenko, they're my second numbers, but I just think getting to 1600, Machalate uh, is group one competitive, is both a second to golden mile, so it might be the one that's a little bit newer on the scene for me, so a bit of an each way bet there. So that's our Randwick guineas. All right, your best bet and your value for the card at Randwick. I think we see the golden slipper winner boys in race three, learning to fly. She goes around there against a small field of fillies, but look, she's $1.70 thereabouts. She'll just win that and she'll tighten up for the Golden Slipper and she'll go and win that too. Uh, next best up there is Giga Kick. I think he's the, the next big sprinting superstar. Could easily be undefeated. Yeah, and I think the challenge takes, when you look at it, Eduardo and co, he's getting older. Giga Kick's improving. I think he can take that race out. Uh, value on the day, race nine, number seven, Bellatrix Black. Second mm -hmm. up here, gets to a mile. She was really good late in that first up run over a sprint trip. She'll be much better at a mile. She's a great each way bet. Sam? Um, I, I'm, I think the two outstanding horses in the Ram McGizzy, Guineas, Oz, Pinko and Zoo Tiger, I, I think they're worth just cupping up. Okay. I, I, I think they are better than, than all the other runners. So I expect them to be uh, filling out two of the top three spots, in particular the top two. My value bet, I, I mentioned him earlier, you know, Cascadian at double figure rides. We're going to get between 15 and $18. You know, for a horse, I think, that's now proven at this level and coming back fresh of a ripping spring, he'll do me. All right, now my best bet is economics in uh, race number five. A very talented colt resuming. I think it's got a really t a good turn of foot and we'll have a good preparation. It's had some barrier issues, but gone back to the trials, trialled well. JMAC went back to the trials as well. And race one, number 11, casual connection, is my best value bet. Uh, really did catch the eye in a benchmark 64. Yes, goes up in grade, but I think we'll handle the distance. All right, economics that's it. catch you because of what happened last week with the quaddy, or you like its fault? Uh, well, if you talk about what happened with the quality, you can find a different omen bet. It has nothing to do with economics. Don't worry about that. It has to do with swearing at the television. But that is another story. That is Sydney. Coming up, James Lamb will join the bench and he'll talk about two Group 1s at Flemington.